In this video, we're going to be looking at kinematics. And a lot of people refer to this topic as SUVAT, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, so here we've got a few formulas we need to memorize. Of course, before we look at these formulas, we need to know what the letters stand for. So we've got five letters, S, U, V, A, and T. So the S is for displacement. And displacement is just how far are you from where you started. Next we have U. U is the initial velocity. And you've probably already guessed, V is the final velocity. A is of course acceleration. And T, you probably guessed it. It's indeed time. Now, so here we've got five formulas. Now, I couldn't stress this enough. We need to memorize these formulas before we carry on. So take a moment and pause this video and memorize them. Have a go at looking at them and seeing if you can write them without looking. I know you might be in a rush to get through this video, but please, please, please do this and it will help you a lot. And when you're back, I'm going to test you on the formulas to see how well you know them. Because the better you know these formulas, the easier you'll find this topic. Okay, so we've got S, U, V and A. Now I want you to tell me what formula has these four letters in it. So if you've got a question involving these four letters, which formula would you use? And you should have said this one, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So let's get some numbers and try using this formula. Okay, so we need to work out V and we're given S, U and A. So let's go ahead and fill the formula in. And you can simply put the right hand side into your calculator and we get V squared equals 196. And square rooting gives us V equals 14. Now, it'd be rare that you're simply given these numbers and told to put it into a formula to work out something. Usually it's in a wordy question and you have to pull out the numbers. Now, a piece of advice, always write SUVA along the left hand side. And as you're reading the question, just fill it in. So you can see what you know and what you need to work out. It just helps a lot. Okay, so now we've got U, V, A and T. So take a moment and tell me which formula uses these four letters. And this is the one you should have said, V equals U plus A, T. Again, let's look at some numbers and use this formula. So in this question, we need to work out A. So we're going to start by filling the formula in and this one should be simple too. And we should be able to work out A very simply. Just take the eight to the other side and divide through by three. So taking eight to the other side, we get 20 take away eight, which is 12. Dividing by three gives us four. A equals four. And if you're not sure about the units for acceleration, depending on the units for the other information, it's usually meter squared squared. It looks like this. Okay, so let's move on to another one. This time we've got S, U, V and T. Which formula has these four letters in it? Take a moment and pause the video and write it down. And this is the formula you should have said. S equals U plus V over two or times by T. Okay, so we're gonna get some numbers and use this formula. So we need to work out T. So let's go ahead and fill in the formula. So we're gonna have three plus seven, which will give us 10. Divided by two will make it five. And then you just simply divide both sides by five. So it'd be 30 divided by five, which gives us six as T. And you should be finding that part easy. It's just simple algebra. And let's do our last one. Again, take a moment and write down the formula.
and this is the formula you should have stated. Now this formula is very common. We use it a lot when things are thrown up or when things are thrown downwards and the acceleration is usually 9.8 due to gravity. So a lot of time when you have questions involving things being thrown, they won't tell you the acceleration is 9.8. The fact that it's thrown downwards, you need to assume that A is 9.8. And if you have your SUVAT written down on the side like I have, you'd fill in the A is 9.8 straight away, even though the question doesn't say that A is 9.8. It's just assumed when things are falling downwards. And of course, if things are thrown upwards, A would be minus 9.8. And another very important fact you should note is if a question says something's thrown up till it reaches its highest height and they ask you to work out that height, you know that V equals zero. The final velocity is zero. And the reason being is if you throw something upwards, the height will keep increasing until the object slows down to zero meaning its final velocity becomes zero. So if a question says that something's thrown up and find its highest height, you know its final velocity when it reaches its highest height is V equals zero. And that's the point it'll stop going up and it'll start coming down. Okay, let's try some numbers with this formula. So we need to work out S. Let's go ahead and fill in the formula and the right hand side can simply be put into your calculator. And since the numbers are easy, you probably don't need one. And we get S equals 26. Now, when you have these four letters involved, and if T is the unknown, you'll usually get a quadratic and you'll get two answers for T. And you'll have to make sense of both answers. Of course, if one of them is negative, you can simply ignore it. But if they're both positive, you just have to make sense of the two answers. Okay, so let's look at some questions which are a little bit wordier. So I'll give you a moment to read this question. Okay, so as I mentioned before, while you're reading, you should fill in the SUVAT. So it's good to have that on the left straight away. So what information has the question told us? The question told us a cyclist has an acceleration of 0.5. We also know the initial velocity of the cyclist at A is 3. And we know the time it took from A to B is 12 seconds. And we want the speed at B, which is the final velocity. So that's V what we need to work out. So I'll give you a moment to suggest what formula we're going to use here. And it's this formula here, V equals U plus AT. Let's go ahead and fill it in. And V is already the subject, so we can simply just work it out. And we get V equals nine. The speed at B will be nine meters per second. Now the next part of the question wants us to work at the distance from A to B. So that's the S. So now that we have to work out S, which is the displacement, which formula are we going to use? Since we've got four pieces of information, we've got multiple formulas we can use. However, since V is something we worked out, it's better to use a formula which V is not in, just in case we got it wrong. So again, I'll give you a moment to think of what formula we're going to use. And it's this one here, S equals UT plus half AT squared. So let's go ahead and fill it in. And you can simply just put this into our calculator and we get S as 72 meters. Okay, so take a moment to read the next question. So at first glance, it looks like this question only tells us one piece of information, the initial speed U as 24. However, from the scenario, we should know a few more pieces of information. Now, I mentioned earlier, if something is thrown and it's moving under gravity, the acceleration is 9.8. Since it's on its way up, we'll say acceleration is minus 9.8. Also, the question mentions that it goes to its highest height. And we should know when something reaches its highest height, we know it has a final velocity of zero. 
So we're okay to do SUVAT here since we have three pieces of information. To use the SUVAT formulas, you always need three pieces of information known to you. Okay, so which formula are we going to use here? And it's this one here. So let's go ahead and fill it in. And it's a simple bit of algebra here to work out what S is. We'll move the 24 squared to the other side and divide through by two times minus 9.8, which is minus 19.6. And we get S as 29.4 to one decimal place. And the units will be meters. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.